All right, we may not be in Tokyo to cheer on Team USA, but chances are there's a piece of Tokyo in your home right now. Yes, the impact Japan has had on pop culture around the world is undeniable, and it goes way beyond those colorful <laughs> Hello, Hello Kitty backpacks. So, Donna, I know you checked it out. Yes, guys, get ready for cuteness overload. Japan's influence on everything from plush toys to TV shows is bigger than ever right now. Take a look. Pokemon, Hello Kitty, Super Mario World, incredibly popular in the U.S. and each one created in Japan. Tokyo-based writer Matt Alt is the man behind Pure Invention, how Japan made the modern world. What have you noticed about the similarities and differences between Japanese pop culture and American pop culture? Here in Japan, it has never been really seen as infantile for adults to engage in playful behavior, whether it's watching cartoons or dressing up in their favorite costumes of their favorite characters. From the very first moments when Westerners made contact with Japan, they were struck by this sense of playfulness. What are some of the trends you're seeing in Japanese pop culture in 2021? Well, I think the most interesting trend that we can see is how much Japanese fantasies have taken off abroad. In particular, anime. Anime, uh, which are cartoons from Japan, have become one of the fastest growing segments on American streaming networks. Netflix is putting a huge amount of money into uh, producing anime shows. And in fact, an anime movie called Demon Slayer was the top grossing movie of 2020 globally. Where does Pokemon fall into that list? So Pokemon, boy, what a world-changing series. Oh, hi, Pikachu. You and I are going to be best friends. <laughs> oh, what's going on? So Pokemon started as a video game on the Game Boy. And when it took off, it was animated into a cartoon series. It was made into a card game. So it's an example of something Japan is really good at, which is making these multi-platform franchises. Talk to us about the kawaii craze. So kawaii is pronounced a lot like Hawaii. It's a Japanese word that means cute. In Japan, it's a kind of pure, unalloyed adorableness. And in the 1970s in particular, a company named Sanrio started using kawaii design, like really cute looking design, to sell its products, most famously Hello Kitty. Sanrio, the company behind Hello Kitty, is valued by investors at more than one billion dollars. It's strange how this doodle of a cat has pulled in people from all over the world. Japan has also influenced the way we consume pop culture. The Walkman, which was invented in Japan in 1979, of the Game Boy that was invented in Japan in 1989. It makes it a sort of powerful presence in our lives, whether it's in the form of Japanese entertainment for an escape or Japanese self-help in the form of someone like Marie Kondo. Hello, I'm Marie Kondo. After my kawaii crash course, I decided to look for Japanese culture right here in the streets of New York. First up at the Pick NYC gift store. Take me on a tour of some of the hottest Japanese toys right now. So first we have our main character who is Rilakkuma, and his name literally means bear that is laid back. They even have a show on it on Netflix now. Oh wow! That kind of emphasizes their little personalities a little more. We have the iconic Hello Kitty. Conveniently enough, it's for Team USA for the new Japanese Olympics. Yay! Everybody loves these. It's called Samisu. So this is part of a blind box trend. What is that? Blind box means that inside the box, you don't know what you're getting. It's a surprise. But on the side of the box, they tell you what you could get. And it's kind of like a little gamble every single time. Next, I search the shelves of the Kinokuniya bookstore. What's the most popular manga here? Well, right now we have Jujutsu Kaisen selling uh, about quite literally over a few hundred copies every week. Why do you think it's so popular? The story revolves around a young boy named Itadori Yuji. It gives you the reality of um, worries or troubles really manifested in everyday life. Everything that we're talking about is so prevalent and popular in America. What do you think is a testament to that? I think that kawaii design and, and a lot of Japanese design succeeds for a very specific reason, which is that it appeals to something in all of us. You don't have to be Japanese to appreciate Hello Kitty or Mario. You don't have to be Japanese to appreciate the Pokemon. And that is key, I think, to the spread of Japanese pop culture all over the world. Oh, this is... And a couple yeah. of fun facts, you guys. Nintendo actually got its start in the late 1800s producing traditional Japanese playing cards. And, wow. brace yourselves, Hello Kitty, not a cat. What? what it's a mean? girl. No. She's a little girl. I'm 
sorry. Hello Kitty is a kitty. Her name is Kitty. <laughs> she's she's a girl, a little she's girl. She's a little she's girl. A little girl kitty. She's a she's little girl. She's a girl kitty, y'all. She's a that little girl. So All right. Funny. Okay, this is controversial, but <laughs> we'll figure good. it out. That was spot on. I told you my 11-year-old is obsessed with anime. I so. know. Matt was such a great expert. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.